leave this here because I'm going to use cheat sheets. Okay, good. <laughs> this stuff happened oh, 55 years ago. See, I'm 83, so that leads me, I wander a little bit. And we've, we've been living it in our house for the last week. Yeah. And arguing over different points. <laughs> I think I'd start out by talking about how I got into the wilderness. I worked for Salon, for the Marin County Probation Department, and I had a boy that I needed to find a placement for it, some place to live away from. And we heard about this boy's ranch up in Del Norte County on the Oregon border. And so I went out to check it out. Spent the day there, slept there that night. Before I went to bed, I called my wife and said, Diana, can you be ready to move in 30 days? I've taken a new job. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you have to work too. <laughs> when I got home and she was asking questions about this, I told her about this house that we were going to live in. It had beam ceilings and a fireplace, two bedrooms. And she asked such questions like, what kind of a stove does it have? <laughs> How did they heat it? Does it have good closets? You know, all these other kinds of things. And I said, Diana, it has beam ceilings and a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, your job is going to be probably cooking for 22 boys and, and, and the staff four days a week. <laughs> Worked right up to the time that it was, oh, Diane and I had been married about a year and a half. We had a <laughs> she, she, was, she was my child bride, 21 years of age. She had a four or five months old son. Who's sitting was, right here. Sitting right here. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. she wasn't too thrilled about the movie, so she started packing. Uh -huh. And when I came home and saw how she packed it, and I repacked everything in the box, and so that was it. I had to pack the whole darn thing. <laughs> My last day of work at Marin, two buddies from Modesto came up with a pickup and a, uh, and a trailer and a, and a new pup, and we loaded up the car and drove all night to get up to Crescent City. Now, Diane and I argue about this. She doesn't even remember the trip. And I tell her that we had breakfast in Eureka before we, got, before we went on to Crescent City. We moved into our, our house that was just like I said, it had beam ceilings, a fireplace, two bedrooms, and a big hole in the wall that wasn't there when, we, when I'd left the last time. The two boys had got into a fight, and uh, but that was no problem because we moved the couch in front of me. <laughs> that hole in the wall was still there when we left four years later. <laughs> Tell you a little bit about the Millers. It was 32 miles from Crescent City, east towards Grants, Pass Oregon on the uh, parallel on the two-lane highway parallel to the Smith River. We got about 120 inches of rain a year up there. The uh, boys ranch was operated by the county of Del Norte and they would usually have maybe one or two kids in the camp out of the 22 that we or 24 that we had. But what they did is they contracted with with other counties throughout the state, as far south as San Mateo. And the counties would pay, and the state of California reimbursed at $95 per, per boy, per bed, and that, that sort of thing. So it didn't cost Villanueva County anything to operate the count or to send their kids there. It was a good, it was a profit maker for them. <clears throat> we had four male staff, Yes, four male staff, three female staff, two school teachers, had two houses, um, a mobile home, a kind of a cottage attached to the school, and we were on a flat called Washington's Flat, where an old miner by the name of George Washington had settled there, and, and we had all kinds of George Washington's stories to tell. The uh, our neighbors were bear, mountain lion, salmon, <laughs> trout, uh, other things like that. The mountain lions provided security. We didn't have a fence, didn't need a fence. All you needed to do was see the paw print of a mountain lion and the sand right down the river below us, 
or hear one scream at night, as we did sometimes, and tell stories of Bigfoot, because we were in Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Runaways were not a problem. <laughs> oh, the bear. We ate them once in a while. We, we trapped, and went, about once a year we'd get a bear, and the bear was on the menu. Not Diana's favorite meal to cook, by the way. For the program, we provided school and work. School was usually half day and work half day. And uh, the boys dug out stumps, cut wood, split, split woods, um, and eventually built a, the dormitory that they were going to live in. And so it was, everything was outdoor. We didn't, we didn't have any power tools, no chainsaws. We had two man cross cuts, double bitted axe, and those were our tools. And you get a couple kids on a, on the edge, on one on each end of a two man cuts cross cut, and you can cut a lot of wood in the day. And they were proud of it. For um, oh, we planted trees for Forest Service. Uh, we did work on the in their campgrounds. We built campgrounds for them. Um, we uh, and that was our our source of extra money for the kids to spend for for their recreation programs. In the evenings, we had a rec hall with a, with a full-size pool table. We didn't have a, a good radio. You couldn't get radio reception down there until late at night. There was no TV that would come into the canyon at all. We, uh, we offered the kids a chance to use some of their, their money to see if we could bring some down from the canyon. The canyon, they were just thrilled and thought that maybe they'd get some TV. But bless their little hearts, they came back a couple of days later and said, we don't need TV. Cancel that. So that was really a, a proud moment for us. Um, we spent we spent a lot of time playing whist. Any of you have whist players? Yeah, those kids were good at whist. <clears throat> we made portable sluice boxes so that we could pan for gold. Uh, we had a we had a rock shop shop there that we could do all kinds of of polishing and cutting and making jewelry for the kids and that sort of stuff. And maybe one night a week we'd go trapping. One of the kids said to me one night as we were going, he said, did you notice, Mr. Bastard, that when we walk into the traps, that the kids walk, by, that we walk behind you, and that when we come out from the traps, we walk in front of you, or pardon me, reverse. We walk, we, yeah, we walk behind you going in, in front of you coming out. Mm -hmm. That was because Many times we were checking the bear trap, yeah. and they didn't want to be there first. <laughs> we, had, we had a couple of cows, two or three pigs, a bunch of rabbits. The cows sometimes broke into the, 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 uh, where we stored the pig feed, and they'd get bloated. And we'd, spend, we'd assign kids all night long to walk those cows, mm -hmm. to walk the cow so that it wouldn't, wouldn't die. And they just thought nothing at all about you. We look, wake, go to wake up in the morning. There'd be a kid hauling this <laughs> tired cow around the room. We were pretty heavily involved in the community. We took our kids downtown to the movies. We took them to the local skating rink. We took them to the high school plays. And when the town was cleaning up and had a paint day where they were going to paint the whole downtown, we painted the town for them. And when they didn't get it all finished, they asked us to come down and finish up for them the next day or two. So it was a community-involved thing for everything we did. It was, a good, it was a pretty good program. Now, living there, two days after we moved in, the generator that provided the electricity went out. We were without electricity for six weeks. Interesting dilemma for Diana, who had this five months old baby and was going to be, be cooking in the, in the kitchen and things like that. <clears throat> but it was simple. We had their Smith River right beside us. So we took him down and bathed him in the river. We hauled, the wa we hauled water back up and boiled it on, on the stove. Yeah, you, you mentioned that the, when the electricity went out, we didn't have our, our pump split for the well. Yeah, the, our pump was electric and it was hooked that way. And we immediately, we immediately ran off to, to Grants Pass, which is about 30-something miles away, and bought a, one, of their, one of their best high-tech 
lanterns that we that provided light for us. We had a nail in each of the beam ceilings in the room, and we would just hang it, whichever room that we were that we were going to be in. On the days off, we would go to uh, oh, Diana worked, cooked two meals a day, four days a week. She would take the, the baby's playpen and the baby, and go down to the kitchen, and uh, and spend her, her day working down there. Uh, I went to work at 6.30 in the morning and worked at 10 o'clock at night for four days. And so I was in a lot of support for that period of time. Uh, on the days off, we would go to Crescent City. It was 32 miles away. Go to the library, do any shopping that we needed to do. Occasionally go to a movie because the movie house in Crescent City had a crying room. Upstairs, glass tin, you could go up there and watch the movie. Your baby could cry. It wouldn't bother anybody but the other babies that were in there. <laughs> Speaking of babies, we had two more children born while we were up there. And they had a great program. As soon as you told the doctor that you were pregnant, you went over to the hospital and started paying the cost of birth. And so by the time that the baby was born, it was yours. Everything was paid for. <laughs> there was no medical insurance out there. Uh, had a great national natural swimming pool at the place. Uh, big diving board given to us by one of the lumber companies, and it was real. It was a real fun place to be and stuff. Now, oh, one of the problems that we had up there was fires were always always a fear. We were a long way from everything, and one night we drove to, wanted to go to Ash and do a play. We drove through the forest fire. To play, drove back through the forest fire to get home, and we checked. We had our emergency plot supplies were were by our door, that, so that if we had to evacuate in a hurry, they were right there. There was a can of can a case of canned milk and Diana's sewing machine. <laughs> and important papers. <laughs> okay. um, when after four years, four marvelous years, I thought. Not so marvelous for Diana. Uh, they, we thought it was time to go because the staff had changed. The three women that were approximately Diana's age had moved on. The, uh, we were, uh, our oldest son was about a year away from going to, uh, going to school, and we thought that we needed to come out of the wilderness and come back into civilization. So, I started looking for a, for a job and got a job with Solano County. And Diana was very pregnant with Suzanne. And so the last week that we were there, Diana went into the hospital and gave birth to our darling daughter. And I took the boys down to their grandmother's in San Rafael, dropped them with the dog, who was a marvelous dog, dropped them with the dog off and drove back up, picked up. Suzanne and Diana put them in the car and drove them 400 miles. That was her first automobile ride <laughs> back to San Rafael. Now, I had made a bed in the back of the car so that they could she, she could sleep and the baby could sleep and that's her. She couldn't go to sleep. I'd been on the road for two days. I said, you drive. I went in the back. <laughs> it was probably, I think, the most fun in our life. But as we, as we re rehashed it in this, this last week, we talked about the many things that, that, that made us laugh. Uh, the, uh, one of the uh, old pioneers there, with the, the, our night man, had only one arm. He had a big hook on the other arm that he wore parts of the time. And during World War II, he'd worked as a lineman, climbing poles mm -hmm. with that hook. Mm -hmm. And one night, the boys were giving him a bad time and wouldn't settle down and go to sleep. So he went out to his car and put on his hook, <laughs> came back in, and, and there was a, the, the beams that held it held up this roof for wood, and he came in and went, thunk, and he stepped back. <laughs> said, go to sleep, worm! And that was it. 
it was a different different way up there. There was there's been a little follow up from then. From that point of time, after we went to Solano County, uh, I drug the family up to the Calusa County to the Fout Springs Boys Ranch because they needed to have somebody fill in for the superintendent who had been taken out in an ambulance. And the new guy that had come in only had been on the job two weeks. So they lived in a, in a mobile home in Calusa County at the foot of Oregon Mountain, or, or, or Washington Mountain, I guess it is, for uh, four months in the summertime, chasing rattlesnakes and things like that. Well, now the payoff from that was that I, when I applied for a job with the state of California and went to the oral board, the chief probation officer in the county that, we bail, that I bailed out by that was on the oral board. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one of the higher scores in the state of California. Now there's another payoff here, and it's a payoff for Bethany, and a payoff for family service. We had a relief cook who was a little bit of a drunk, and when he had to serve time in jail for about four weeks, I, as the junior member, got assigned the job of cooking for 22 boys and the staff for about four weeks. So now then, when we put our sign up on the, on the family promise thing to cook for, the, for a day, Diana says, you know how to cook for that many people. You cook too. So last last month last month it was meatloaf. This month it's pulled pork. My pulled pork. Yeah. <laughs>